Okay, welcome to the channel. Well, if you're here today, you're going to see how to change the webbing on a backplate and wing and, and maybe when to change the webbing. I get a lot of folks ask me that, like, when is it time? And I'll show you one BC where very clearly it's time. So, so today what we're going to do is, yeah, when, when you might need to change it, the signs, uh, where to uh, source your webbing, and then how to go through it. And first, the tools, the tools are going to be needed. Uh, you'll need a demolition tool, possibly. This makes your life easier taking the webbing out. And uh, if you're going to be cutting any webbing, I really like to use one of these triple, triple torch lighters, and I'll show you why. It makes the cutting easier and neater. And then, obviously, all my hardware is on this VC still right now, this back plate. Uh, however, I've got some spare stuff here just in case something doesn't work out. Uh, I'm going to be replacing the little rubber bits and whatnot, and uh, also there's a bungee here that's, that's long gone. So that's what we're going to be doing today. First of all, usually I like to do this on the floor, a nice carpeted floor that I have space and it's nice and quiet. This is going to be very clanky on the table, but it's, it's a little bit uh, better for my filming situation here. So it is what it is. Let's have a look. Here is my, my personal back plate. And I honestly don't know how long I've been using this one since the last time I threaded it. It's probably at least five years, and I really have no idea uh, how many dives that is. But something interesting, have a look here. I think most people, most people, when they imagine where the, the straps are going to be like breaking or almost breaking, they think up here at the shoulders. But if you have a look, you have a look from the back. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look great, right? But it's probably almost 50% through. And this was really good webbing. I don't remember where I got this webbing, webbing from. It might have been uh, from Hog or from another supplier, maybe in Asia, but it is very, very heavy duty webbing. Um, so this is about 50%, maybe 40% through, and this is no worries at all. However, the place where it really wears through is here the weight pocket area. And let me show you this. So this one I had on with a uh, the weight keeper. Uh, weight keeper, what is that? A buckle, oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this, this is, this is really just hanging by the thread, isn't it? I guess there's, I don't know, maybe 10, 15% left there because the weight pockets uh, pull down and they swing. And this actually is where most of your wear is going to happen. As you can see up here, this is 50% gone and I'd be happy to keep that going. That is bearing the weight of your tank, but it's in this direction. And I don't think even 40% is gonna break anytime soon in this direction. However, down here, the weights swinging and whatnot, I think this would, <laughs> this would definitely break uh, in a hurry. All right. Oh, I should have gotten myself another buckle. I have another buckle that I have my eye on, and this is not it. So that's one thing that I really like to change. I see they've got those new, um, what are they? Uh, I'm gonna do a little demolition here. They have those new buckles that I like. They're made of Delrin, I think, uh, XS Scuba is one of the places that, that sells those. They're not cheap. They're not cheap. I think they're like 20 bucks each or something like that. Um, let me show you here because I might not be making a cut. Let me show you here what I use the lighter for. Uh, when you cut the webbing, if you cut it like this first and then use a lighter, it makes a very blunt surface. And that might be okay, but it's often not great for sticking through your, uh, your buckle here. It's not very streamlined. And sometimes you get a little bit afraid. Good grief, this is really, really stiff. I don't know where I got this from. So what I do is I'll make a line where I decide I have to cut my webbing. And then I'll pre-melt it with this lighter on both sides. Oh no, don't tell me I ran out of fuel. No, I didn't. There we go. Right, so I'll do that on both sides, let it cool just a bit, and then I'll cut it. Right, and now I've got a very, very clean edge that I might want to clean up a little bit because I'll have these points on the side that uh, won't be so, so happy. 
So just, just clean up the points like that. And sometimes there might be just a tiny bit of fuzz here. And Bob's your uncle, right? And of course, I, I usually make them in shapes and whatnot if they're going through, through the buckle. But that gives you some idea of how I use the lighter to cut this. And I, I keep one of these in my, my Save-A-Dive box. Although, to be fair, I'm a little bit worried in the sun every once in a while. This is the box. I try to keep it in shape. Every once in a while, it'll be left out in the sun. It'll come out and the, uh, the propane lighter is puffed up like a grenade. I have to throw it away. So be careful for that. All right, this is really tough to get out of here. This is right, if the webbing, very often, I'm, I'll show you in a moment the webbing that I've got. But very often, the webbing that comes from some of these manufacturers, it's very floppy. And that seems on the surface like it would be a good thing. You think, oh, I'm comfortable on my shoulders. But in reality, when it, especially once it gets wet once and you're on your second dive or on a boat and it's all flopped down and you're trying to get your hands through it, it's a real chore, your, your arm through it, pardon me, when you're trying to slide your arm through it. Whereas this is holding its own shape, really easy to slide your arm through. This is my, my knife that I wear on my belt. This is a old Hollis one. And so what I'm, what I'm in favor of um, are pull knives of some sort. This one is titanium. It's not really sharp. I kind of even wonder if it would cut this. I'll give it a try. This is one of the things that I have rescue students do on their course is uh, testing their knife, their cutting device, to actually see if it'll cut through some webbing. Um, very often it won't. Especially if it's titanium, and titanium is not so sharp, and especially if it's unserrated. Now the serrated surface on this one does pretty well. I could, I could saw, saw my way through here for sure. I don't think this pull knife, yeah, I don't think the pull knife would work. So anyway, it's always good to test your cutting device on the real deal. For you instructors out there, uh, whenever I change, whenever I make uh, a back plate and I web it up, I always have a bit left and I'll save those strips in the bottom of my box uh, for rescue courses and let the folks uh, cut them. And you know, nothing does better than a pair of scissors, right? The EMT shears, they're just the thing. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is, <laughs> this thing is frozen on here. All righty. <clears throat> I'll show you maybe later. So this hole, because um, you need a hole to go through your back plate, right? And almost always, um, well, there's, there's going to be a hole up here that you need to put your um, STA through, the STA bolt. Now, you might be tempted to get the webbing that already has a grommet hole in it. And what I found, so if you see here, very often plates, it's not going to be on center. And usually those grommets come right in the center of the webbing. And in this case, that would not be a fit, right? So you'd have to leave it loose and then slide it up to use that grommet. That's one disadvantage of the grommet. The other disadvantage is, the, is that the grommet has quite a bit of width compared to this webbing. And so I find that my, my STA, uh, when I put it on there, it has a bit of roll, a bit because you know, maybe those grommets will add an extra few millimeters or something. And if you're a backplate where you know, if, if, your, if your wing nut is a few millimeters unscrewed, you'll notice it. It feels like it's a half a centimeter unscrewed, but um, just, just a few millimeters makes a difference. So personally, I'm going to web it up. Then from this side, I get a great big hot screwdriver and I heat it up on the stove and I burn it through here, and then I burn it through the other way and make it nice and neat, and then it's a perfect custom hole there. That's what I do. Right, I am just gonna cut this out. Wish I had some EMT shears, actually. Naturally, I do not recycle the rubber pieces that I put on here. You know, who knows how long those will last, and once they snap, you'd have to take the whole thing apart. When I install them, I put on some spares, which I'll show you. I gotta say though, if these are five years old, these are really in good shape. I can't believe with all that UV, they're, they're looking quite good. Great, that's stiff, right? These are my, my pockets of choice these days. These are the newer version of the XS Scuba pockets. Um, they come, the older versions held like one, two kilo weight. These will hold two, two kilo weights. Um, so that's what 2.2 
uh, it's almost five pounds of, of weight. And the designs that I've got here are the dumbbell downward. And they also have the none, well, it's not automatically double, but it opens in the upward direction. That's, that's also an option that I went with those. Almost down to the bare plate. I budgeted an, an hour for doing this. I think, it, I think it might take me more. I also decided that I was going to make a new crotch strap. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So I have <laughs> kind of, a, I'm a camo freak. So I have in mind for my next wing, which I really don't need a new wing right now, but who does, right? Uh, and uh, I, I, I see they make them in multicam now. So I, I, I'm thinking to go for a multicam wing. So I thought it would be very cool to uh, have some webbing that kind of sort of matched. Now, let me tell you about the webbing I got. The first webbing I ordered, I haven't ordered web webbing in a long time. I've got a lot of black webbing. I've got a football field of black webbing at home, but I wanted something different, as I just said. So at first, off eBay, I ordered this, and it said, you know, mill spec, thick, la 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 la. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, thinking that it could be my main webbing. Well, I got it, it came here, and it's like, there's no way. There's no way I would want this on my shoulder. Right? It's just way too flexible. However, this is perfect for a crotch strap. Your mileage may vary, but for me, something going up my crotch, I'd rather have something like this rather than something like, <laughs> like this, right? That's, that's gonna be a very unpleasant crotch experience. So this is much more pleasant. Now, I make up my own crotch straps. Um, you know, you could just copy, all you have to do, you're gonna make a loop there, right? And that's gonna be the one that comes up as a loop here for your buckle to go through. So it needs to be a decent size, the loop that you make, so that whatever buckle you have can easily pass through it. And make sure of that because the buckle that I mentioned, that new um, Excess Scuba, the Delrin one, they're actually much bigger and I think that would be a just fit on this, but some of them don't make it well. Um, and so for this, for this keeper, I use a, a serrated keeper. And then the same thing down here. And this is gonna go through the plate and then back through itself, and that is the cross strap. And remember, people always ask me about the cross strap. Quick lesson on that. With a back inflate BC at the surface, this is going to help you out from being pushed over. It's gonna keep the bladder closer to your body so it doesn't, if the bladder comes away from your body, it's gonna push your, your body forward on the surface. If you can keep it as close as possible, then not. Other things, if you're flying doubles or you think you might fly doubles in the future, then you definitely need a crotch strap because that BC has a lot more lift and it will hang you at the surface, especially if you need to take it off to put it in the boat. Uh, if, you, if, you release, if you release your belt, without having a cross strap to hold on to, that, that bladder is going to float up and hang you in the water by your shoulders. And you might not be able to get out of that easily without help. So, words to the wise. Oh, sorry, let me continue with my story. So, yeah, so this was definitely not, not shoulder strap material, mean webbing material, good for the cross strap. So then I went back to an old manufacturer that, that I've gone to in the past and I reminded myself, Piranha. I'll put the link below. Piranha has really, really good uh, stiff webbing. I don't know if it's quite as stiff as that or is, this might be a little bit thinner, but you can see, right, it, it holds its shape. That's going to be perfectly adequate. And they come in a few colors. I don't remember which colors, but uh, they had what I was looking for. I think this is olive drab. I'll put it in the link. So that's gonna be my main webbing. And of course you need about 15 feet of it. So I think I ordered 30 because I wanted, uh, I'm also gonna do another back plate. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this. And of course it, it could last again. I would not have to change this. There's no, there's, there's no crotch wear. And uh, up in the tank, it was very minimal wear because there's very little stress on this. So I could have kept this if I, if I, if I didn't want to look so cool. But looking cool is important. Looking cool is very important, as you know, as you all know. All right, so I'm gonna strap this through and then thread it, thread it on through here. Now, generally, with with the crop strap, I um, let's see. This one, this one, I had 
the webbing, both sections of the webbing go over the D-ring. Um, so with, with a flexible webbing, you can do that. So I guess I'll do that here. Let's try right, the way I do that is I make, I make a big loop and that makes it easier to put, put this bottom one through. Easier, but <laughs> yeah, the bigger, the bigger the loop you make it, the easier it's going to be on yourself. So I'll just get it in there and then I can adjust for length afterwards. All right, got it. All right, so now I've, I've got it rough, rough threaded and I can adjust this length as I, as I see fit. I, this isn't the final fit, of course. So, all right, so there is my, my cross shaft. And generally what I do, once I get it pretty close to where I want it, I'll cut it with like maybe leave a few inches of adjustment in case. I mean, you know, I've never, I've never adjusted this once it's good because I'll adjust it for like a wetsuit, dry suit kind of size. It'll fit both. I don't, of course, adjust between wetsuit and dry suit. That would be ridiculous for me. And I don't have one of those nice slide ones I see. Uh, some of the systems have a sliding a slider, sliders, where you can do that. I don't have to. All right, I'm gonna go for the main webbing. The main webbing starts up here. And I'm gonna go in here, and that's gonna go around the back, up through here, and then up through the top. So, let me... This part is really messy because it's really curly. So this this one's probably the hardest one. Oh my goodness, there we go, there we go. Alright, All right. And what I want is I want to get evens on both ends, right? So I'll usually do that by putting it on the floor. Yep, that's close. All right, now, an old trick that I've, that I've read about, probably on scuba board, and I don't think I've ever seen in person, is here to have a section of inner tube, so, or a neoprene sleeve they sell, and have the webbing inside the sleeve, and then put it through here, or in the inner tube, and that would just about eliminate um, any wear on the straps. However, it's a pain for me to do, and up here isn't my my concern for the webbing. It's actually down here, and I don't, you know, it could work down here maybe, but yeah, I'm not gonna do it, so. All right, now, what I wanna do is, I wanna get this very tight against, against here. Very tight, right? And the more, uh, the more tight this is, the more flat you can get that profile, that means your STA is gonna be as close as possible. Alrighty, continuing on. This curly mess. Doesn't look like much of a backflip harness yet, does it? Okay, there we go. Alrighty, so that that is, is nice and tight, and that is right, that's the basic of of your upper assembly of the harness. And uh, you know, I just make sure that you know, I'll fold it, I'll make sure it's all tight and in here. So this is gonna form the, uh, the right arm over here, or the left arm. Now, up at the top here, there are gonna be some rubber pieces. Now, uh, if you buy a harness kit, they'll come with rubbers like that. However, if you, what I usually do is, I can't remember which size inner tube I get, but there is one that's about a, this is two inch webbing, and there is one that's like about two inches. <laughs> this one is actually a little smaller. Uh, so you get a two inch bicycle tube and you just cut them up and then you have more than all of our need for those. Yeah. All right, so I will, uh, this is on the left to hold onto my uh, BC hose. Actually, I'll, it, will, it could be for the BC inflator hose and the regulator inflator hose, right, that, that goes through BC. I need one piece of rubber up there. Therefore, I'm going to put two, so I have a redundant. Uh, I also have a trick that I'm not using here. I usually have a roll, uh, an, empty, an empty toilet paper roll, and I'll, I'll put the roll onto here, and then I'll, I'll put 
the rubber pieces onto that roll and slide the roll up, and it's very fast. Well, this is a little bit less, less convenient to do it by hand. It's a lot of friction. And you might even have to be careful not to, um, not to cut, cut your, uh, your rubber there. All right. Okay, so I've got, I've got two of them up there, a uh, primary and a redundant. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that D-ring. And I use, for those, a non-sliding keeper as opposed to this. Because of this, I will, I will probably adjust a couple times. And also, this is a little bit bulkier. And this will never move. I never, I never have that problem. I'm going to put a D-ring up there. Right, and it's one of those uh, bent D-rings. And then, so that it's gonna hang on your body like this. Just gonna rough, rough fit it. Also, in that D-ring, if you want, most people will put a bungee. That will also hold, be holding your inflator hose in place. Now, I make these. Uh, some people have these really nice O-rings I see they source. I really like those. I haven't. I haven't really looked in Japan to see if I could source them, but uh, if, if you can source a nice O-ring, like probably for a vacuum cleaner, I think they are, for a vacuum, vacuum motor, those are very, very nice. All right, here I am. Got my D-ring roughly in place. And then down here, there are also a couple of rubber pieces, and that's gonna be if you have a backup light of some kind. Clip the backup light, body of the light hangs down, and you take the rubber piece and store and secure the, the flashlight. That really works well with those standard, if, it, if it's a standard size, like more like a, I don't know, like one of those calcium backups or cave light, something like that. That, that size works really, really well. Um, if it's something big and funky, less well. And the really nice thing is when you when you have your light stowed down there, you can't you really can't feel it. I mean, it looks very cumbersome looking, but I never feel it actually. What you do feel is carrying your BC around. If you've got one of those on each side and you have a, a main light hooked on your regulator, all that it starts to get heavy. All right. Now here is the critical twist. Sometimes I've ordered BCs and they come with it twisted this way. All right, we're gonna go into this slot and then out that slot. And so every once in a while, like, you know, in the past I was buying, you know, and uh, maybe a supplier would be helpful and, and have a rough rig and they came like this, stowed in. Well, you can tell that's gonna be into your ribs, actually. So what you want is into that first slot this way, right? So everything is smooth against your body. Right over here, I will also use a smooth. Now, lots of people use those, uh, what do you call them? Sliding systems. I think, yeah, definitely Halcyon has one. Uh, Deep Sea Supply used to have one. I don't have one. <laughs> and uh, maybe, maybe it would be great. The thing that would be the hassle for me would be the weight, the weight pocket. I don't know how I would be able to rig it up so that Right, because my weight pocket's on there and it's secured because I don't want the weight pocket sliding around. So if I had it, right, so the weight pocket's here and I need to slide it up, up you know, get more webbing, to, it means I would have to pull through the weight pocket. I have no idea how that would work. So I have no, that's one of the reasons why I haven't experimented with that. Maybe, maybe someone smarter than me has, has figured that out and that's great. All right. All right, so I've got a rough, a rough shoulder here. I've got two uh, pieces of rubber down there. I've got my two pieces up here. I've got my, <laughs> I've got my D-ring here, and I have a little piece of bungee. So now I'm going to repeat that on the other side. But the only, the only, even moderately helpful thing I want to do, right? I want to make sure these are, these are roughly the same. Just makes my job easier because most people are fairly symmetrical. Although some people, you know, if you're a big hulk on one side, sometimes these, to have a similar position here, uh, one of these might have to be a little bit longer if someone is, is a lot more built up on one side. As you can see, I'm not. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna do a rough fit on myself. That's gonna be nice.
So when I do a rough fit, I'm looking for two things. Uh, one is that it feels about right on my arms and the plate drop. I'm gonna, this is actually just about perfect if I were only wearing a t-shirt in the water. So I'm gonna loosen this up. And also what I'm looking for is the uh, height of the D-rings. Well, if it's a bit too low, what happens is it's gonna get caught in your arm and you won't be able to move your arm that way, right? The, uh, the keeper will, will stop your arm from moving. So down too low, even though that's easier to reach, it's, it's not comfortable actually. And if it gets too high, then you can't reach it, right? So I, I'm looking for that, that Goldilocks zone. So both of these, I'm gonna move it, move it down a bit and I'm going to uh, loosen it up a bit. So one, one way that, that's, it's a little bit easier to adjust this if you take it out and pinch it and then move move this so you, you move it by how much you want the how much webbing you want to move in one direction or another and then you pull it in the direction you want it to move to so i want it to move to this direction so i'm going to pull the curve there Ooh, it's a chore. all right so quick check yeah they're about the same and i know that these were going to come down a bit So this is for a rough fit. This is this is for me. This is acceptable. It's a good start. I don't want to on the initial. I don't want to have to adjust it too too much after that because every adjustment later has to go through the, the weight belt and then maybe through the um, the belt. It's the buckle the belt buckle itself. So the closer I can get my arms now, it's kind of helpful. Okay, next we've got to work with the weight pockets now. So I'm obviously I'm reusing these. All right, I'm getting toward the end. This is good. <laughs> right. Okay, these come right through. Now, when when you put this for the final fit, I want this weight pocket as close to the back of the plate as possible, as close as close as possible. Right now, I'm not going to put it so close necessarily because you know, it's a rough fit. So I'm going to have to have some flexibility to move around here. But um, this space is kind of, it's, it's in high demand. Um, yeah, it's, it's in high demand. And on my left hip, this is my left hip, uh, I want, if I'm gonna go true DIR, I want my D-ring, there it is. I want that D-ring right on my left hip for the SPG to be clipped off. And so if I don't have this right against the plate, then this uh, starts to move forward. And that makes the hose that reaches there, it, it might have to be longer or something. So. I will put this on with the keeper. Uh, here, it, it's kind of hit or miss. I mean, uh, I could go with uh, one of these. One thing you might want to keep in mind, whatever weight pocket you're using, some weight pockets I've used in the past will swallow weight keepers. So it, it will just slide over it if there's heavy weight in it, of course, especially. So one thing that's absolutely swallow proof are these are these, right? The, I think they're hopefully Dilrin, but other plastic maybe. Uh, and it's kind of uh, very proud up top. This makes a very big footprint that that will definitely not slide over. But I don't think I had problems with that sliding, so I'm going to use one of these locking ones. All right, so just going to make a rough fit there. The buckle goes on the left hand side. All right, so the buckle is going to be over here, and I'm going to put it through the weight belt and uh, this is going to slide through and I'm going to and then pop it through over here. And on my left side, I have this little, this little knife and it kind of just slides around. Now, personally, I honestly have not found peace with a good place to have a cutting device. So, um, for example, if it, the, 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 I think the Hagarthian way is on your left hip and they very often take steak knives or something that hangs down off your belt like this much. The problem I have is that when I bend down, that thing's going right into my thigh or worse, right into my groin. So this is not a happy, happy thing for me. Now this one, because the belt goes through here, it doesn't hang down so much. It's kind of a happy medium. So that's what I do. So I got this one over there. And now I'm going to have my, my belt. This, this thing's really in tough shape. So the way I like to do mine, 
right? So there's gonna be there's gonna be three holes there, and you have a choice. Of course, you can go through that way or this way. I like to go through downward, and the reason is you will have more flexibility later. I'll show you what happens. Uh, some people also throw a piece of rubber over here to hold on to their excess belt. That's not a bad idea, so I'll throw one on. But you could always throw this one on later because there's nothing, there's nothing. Yeah, I like the way that, that webbing looks. It's the first time I've personally had any color. I've sold lots of them. I've made lots of them for others with red, but I've never done it myself. I think I made a pink one. I think I made a yellow one. Okay, yeah, I want to come, I want to come downward because then at the end it's going to come underward. So I got that. Ouch. And this. Alright, what you might want to do for a rough fit is stop there. So it's nice and easy to adjust. You can see I'm going to have lots of. But uh, next, I'm going to go through the top hole. Alright, and then last, I would come down doubled through this bottom hole. And so, bottom slot, pardon me. Now, and. So the nice thing about that, so coming as I did down through the top first, that means this is going to be in the back, and it's really nice. And what I'll do is, the excess, I'll have it come all the way through here, through this knife, and then into this belt even. So I try and have that much extra, and also it makes this extra stiff as well. So just in case, I, I'll never need it, but the stiffness is kind of nice. All right, but for now, because it's rough, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep this out. There we go. But this side is just the weight pocket. And before, I had this holding it on, right? I had an extra buckle. And that was for my, my deco days. And sometimes on the right side, I would also have a canister light. So if I was going to use the canister light, I would open this up, take off my weight pocket, and put on, because my canister was big and heavy. So I didn't need a weight in that case. And then I would hold it on with this temporarily. And singles, I would switch back to this. I don't really do doubles anymore. Uh, so I'm going to just hook this up with a keeper on that side. And I'll use one of these serrated keepers. All right, now normally I would crank this as, as close as possible to the back plate also. However, also, in this case, I'm not going to do that because I don't know my final width. And if I put it really tight right now, it might be a little bit harder to adjust later. So I'm going to leave it a bit loose. That's it for rough. That's it. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm, when, when I get some exposure protection on, uh, what, I, what I'm going to want is, so this side is the side that's going to go through this buckle. So I want this. All right, to come, I think I could do it here. Actually, to come around my body and end like over here. All right, just end over here somewhere. And I can, remember, I mean, that's your, that's your safety release. So you don't want to tuck it or tie it or anything, but I'll, I'll have it come around to over here somewhere, all right? I don't want it to end right at my buckle. That, that could be very problematic. I definitely want to have a little bit of extra here. If I need to grab it, it makes it easier to take off as well. The buckle side, the buckle, I want, ideally, for it to come probably just a couple centimeters from my weight pocket or the keeper there. Because again, uh, I don't want it to be tight to the point where it has to be here because my crotch strap, my crotch strap hole is gonna be here. So if this, if this is like just making it through, and I, I've seen people like that, it, it's really, really, really cumbersome. I, I would never be able to tolerate that for me. So I want it to clearly be over here somewhere. All right, that's it. I hope you got something out of it. So that is gonna be cool. This is my first treat of like a color for myself. And if I do step up to that multicam wing, uh, they're, they're on AliExpress. I'm, I'm thinking of going for one and I think, well, they're like 140 bucks or something like that. So I think I, think I might go for one of those and uh, that would be a pretty sweet rig, I think. All right, so that is the rig, and I'm looking forward. I, I might, I might use this within a couple weeks. So I've got to get it adjusted. So hope that helped you out. Uh, the link for Piranha is down below. I guess I'll put the link for this. But remember, for me, that is only for crotch strap. And I think that's it. Well, thanks for joining, and I'll see you again on the beach. Bye bye.